This is our love story. This is our journey. Hey family, welcome to another episode of the Our Love Journey podcast. My absolute favorite place to be. Yeah, me too. Yo, guys, when we're here, it's almost like we become different people. <laughs> what I do you like, mean? I feel like I become so comfortable. Yeah. Like, I just want to spill the beans. Yeah. Like, I feel like this is also kind of therapy for us. Like, it it's is. a safe space Definitely. to discuss things that normally we would discuss them, like, with attitude. But when we're here, it's a conversation. Like, I'm here to hear you out and you're here to hear me out. I think so. Out. Maybe that's what it is. I think it, yeah. it gives you the... It's almost like there's a very special um, environment where listening is also as important as talking and that's not normal in yeah. like our society yeah. so i think i love that about this podcast and today's podcast is uh sponsored by a friend of ours yeah a uh, friend of the channel friend of the channel that's the one <laughs> i was thinking a friend of ours friend of the channel is sponsored by superbalist superbalist is having a three-day sale called the ultimate checkout which mm-hmm. is happening on the 24th the 25th and the 26th of august now with this ultimate checkout on day one it's the most searched products day two the most wish listed products and day three highest rated products so sure. now now is a good time to get all the things that you've probably put on your wish list. Yeah. No, guys, I really, really like these kind of um, sales that happen on Superbalist because, one, if something is highly rated, you yeah. know that you're getting a good product. Absolutely. And you're getting it at an absolute steal. So that's the best part. And, I mean, with our previous office, we actually furnished it with Superbalist, with Superbalist products, yeah. like the whole office space. Yeah. So you know that you're getting high quality. I actually still use a lot of the stuff, yeah. even in the new house. And I think even most of our equipment is take a lot. People always ask us where we get most of our equipment. Take a lot. So if you're yeah. looking for new stuff, now's a chance to go and check out the Ultimate Checkout. With Superbalist, it's as easy as clicking a button and they deliver it right at your doorstep. Okay, cool. Should we get into it today? Wait, before we get into today's topic, I need to read a review. Yes. This is how we know that we are doing the right thing. We're at the right place. And yeah, I think the reviews are always so encouraging. Yeah, they They remind us us why we do it. And it's our chance to kind of engage with you know, the audience. Cool. We've got a five star. Thank you to everyone who reviews. Don't forget to review guys and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, this podcast was everything and more. This is based on the podcast. Is my relationship real or just a game? For me, this podcast was everything and more. I root for it 100%. I'm married now and working side by side with God to build my family and show we live our best lives according to his plans for us. Because I know his plans and dreams for us are unmatched to anything we could ever aspire to. However, this is definitely the type of content I wish I would have ran into when I was younger. I definitely would have been spared a lot of drama and heartache. If I could, I would so share this podcast with the whole world of young adults who aren't yet married. So good, guys. Golden content. Keep it up. And may God continue to be the center of your work. Siabonga from Slindile Matiba. Thank you so much, Slindile. We really, really appreciate it. And I think a part of why we do it is because we do feel like there isn't enough content like this, especially from younger couples. So we want to be a part of the solution. Uh, And I'm glad that, you know, you guys appreciate it. And that it's been, you know, helpful. helpful. In and I also agree that I wish I had content like this when I was younger. It would have honestly spared me a whole lot of drama or at least opened my eyes. It's OK, I'm doing this, but I know exactly what the outcome is. Yeah, yeah. I think you want to have as much information as you can to yeah. make informed decisions. Cool. Lead yeah. us. Sir. So today's topic. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so today's topic, guys, is something I've been thinking about. And I thought, wow. Maybe I should get me involved in this because I was wondering just during because we've been together for six years, six seven and a half, years, six seven. and a half, no, seven. I've been with him for seven years. OK, <laughs> that's, that's not the topic. <laughs> the topic is so during these seven years, what do you think has been the best time, um, okay. the dating period or the marriage period? Because we've been married for almost five years. Yeah. So. Which, when you think of, like, the best times of our relationship, do you think it was in the dating era or in this marriage era? Ah, oh, both. <laughs> Can I not, say both? You have to pick one. Okay, let me elaborate why I say both. Firstly, ah, th- oh, this is such a hard question. I thought I had an answer, but I actually <laughs> don't. Um, but in the four... In the four and a half, almost five years of being married, I think our fourth year has been the best time of our lives. Mm, um, in all aspects. Yeah. 
(laughs) In all aspects, because I think we've grown to really, really know and understand each other. And, oh, babe, this is such a hard question. It is a hard question. It's such a hard question because it's easy to say in the dating, but when we were dating, we kept on saying, oh, we can't wait to be married. And it was harder because there's a lot of things that we wanted to do that we obviously couldn't um, really do. Like, we couldn't go all out for each other's dreams. Um, We couldn't be sexually liberated. Um, We couldn't... uh, we couldn't travel. We couldn't really travel together. I mean, although you try, but you know, you can't really stay in one in the same room in a mm-hmm. hotel. And even if you do, you're just like guilty the whole night. You just be like the Holy Spirit is saying yay, yay, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, whole, the whole time. Um, so there was a lot of restrictions during dating, okay. but also there was a lot of fun because all like I I didn't see any fault in you, so I was very blinded. Sure. Nah? Yeah. Because like it's it's as if um, I was listening to a podcast. And the psychologist was saying that you, when you meet someone, your dream person, eh, like you'll say in the beginning, it's like, this is my dream guy. But in actual fact, they're your worst nightmare because they're here to heal you. Mm. So basically, you have to go through that phase where they're your worst nightmare. They heal the child in you or the trauma in you in order for them to be your dream guy again. Sure. So basically, you were so my cool. dream guy. Then my worst nightmare. And then I think now we're in a stage where you're my dream guy again. I don't know how long that's going to last if I'm going to go back <laughs> to another you're my worst nightmare. Yeah. But um, that thing that I fell in love with, it's like, oh, okay, I see it now. Because, I mean, I think the beginning of marriage is really hard because that's when everyone is yeah. showing their truths. Um, their true colors. Uh, there's finances. We had kids um, very um, very close by. Um, we've both self-improved. So there's all of that. And then I think now everything's starting to kind of make like a little uh, more sense. Yeah. Did I answer the question or did I go on and on about no, different did. things? No, okay. no, you did. You did answer the question. Okay. And actually in answering the question, you really changed my answer. answer. But it's I'm hard. Gonna, it's, I'm going to stick with my I answer. I thought it was a simple <laughs> ask. I thought it was yeah. a simple question, but it's not. Yeah, I think honestly speaking, there is no answer to it. Th- um, it all works together. It's really, I just, I basically just asked this question to have you say that because the, I think what I realized when I asked myself this was that one, every stage has a purpose Yeah. and every stage is beautiful in its own way. And mm-hmm. so you can't really pick one over the other because you need both. Sure. Right. Yeah. And like you said, if you don't go through the dating stage, where everything is dreamy and lovey-dovey, yeah. you don't have an idea of what to work towards when mm. things get rough, right? Mm. So I think for so us, good. it was important that we be in that dating era and things were just we just so good in each other. Yeah. We were just, you know, just lovey-dovey and oblivious to to what life could be. Yeah. Or like when we met, we didn't even have real goals. Like it <laughs> we was were, just we were just floating. We were just floating. And so but it was beautiful in that when we got married and like life got like tricky yeah. and things got hard, it's that we had those memories. Yeah. We knew the potential, like I knew your potential of being bubbly. I remember when we were dating, uh, one time I told her, she used to annoy me so much because every time I'd see her, she'd just be hopping. <laughs> like, guys, Bubu was so happy she would hop when well, she that, walks. Do you know how true. happy you have to be? No, but... And honestly, you were in a very dark place. So your, so my light was an issue to you. No, but she was just so happy. <laughs> you were singing all the time. Like she was just humming songs. Like literally they could play a song that just <laughs> released today. And the Bumi would start, I just she start humming it. I'm it's like, so how angry. do you know this song? <laughs> so, so, but I remember. So when you, when things started to change and yeah. life started to get hard for us. Yeah. And even for you, and maybe like your career was turning, taking turns. Yeah. You're dropping out of school. You're kind of losing what you thought you were supposed to be. You're losing your identity yeah. in certain spaces. Like I remembered, because this is the same person that hops, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember that this is the same person that can hum to a song they don't know. <laughs> so, so I think it all kind of works together. Yeah. But I really do think when people talk, and I heard, I've heard people talk about the five-year mark 
in marriage. What have, what have they said about the five-year mark? Apparently, like, that's when it gets good. Like, bliss. Like, I feel like, because we're approaching that mark, and yeah. I feel like it's already kind of starting to get good. Yeah. And not good in, like, that it's perfect. Yeah. But good in that it's it's settled. Yeah. Like, it feels like, it feels like it's it doesn't feel like work anymore. Okay. Like, even if it does feel like work, but it feels more like your dream job. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it's still hard. Yeah. But, like... It's kind of like you'll take the hard. You'll take the hard because now you're getting paid your worth type of thing. You know, when you're starting out, I don't know how corporate works, but I'm gonna pretend when you're starting out in corporate, you're working really hard, but you're not really getting paid your worth, right? And as you climb the ladder, now you become a partner. I feel like now we're becoming partners in the firm, and so now at least you know it's hard. But I mean, I'm showing up in a Porsche, (laughs) and I'm wearing like an Italian suit. Your metaphors are you? (laughs) People get it. I feel like we really have kind of found our way back or at least are determined yeah. to find our way back to that that bubbliness that hopping yeah. that that humming yeah. and and that's a beautiful thing to do especially i think it's going to be sweeter once you've gone through some stuff through some stuff you spoke about something that i want us to actually kind of touch on you spoke about um the seasons like mm. everything's important and we once did a video of that that there's the there's the dating phase and there's the newly married phase and there's the new parents phase yes. and then there's the settling phase um so there's all these different Phrases. seasons and that i think require um, a different you, but they're all important. Like we can't be in a season of new parents and rushing to be to to to, to send them off to school. Like we have to embrace every season, right? We do. Which season has been your favorite in the in to the embrace. to embrace the dating, newly married? Um, no, actually, which season has been the hardest? Let's rather go there. The, the hardest. hardest, yeah. So dating. Newly married, new parents, um, and then what are we now? I don't even know. I don't know what's... Like. But I'll tell you what has been the hottest... Um, I don't know if it's a phase or a thing. Yeah. But tr- being... Going back to being um, like a career person... Okay. Has been, for me, the hardest. Like, Because I feel like when you become married... You well for me at least. Yeah, marriage becomes the first kind of. If there was a list, you put it above like your work. Yeah, I think if you want things to work. Yeah, you probably put it above your work. Yeah, so maybe it would be like God, family, career type of thing, and when you have kids, it becomes God, family, kids, career. Yeah, and so I feel like once your kids start to grow, and and you, you know, you don't really have to be changing diapers all the time anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't really have to be, you know, watching out if this mm-hmm. child's going to kill themselves. Then you kind of have to reshuffle that yeah. list again. Yeah. And for me, I think the hardest part is to take off that hat mm. and then go back to being the hunter who's like climbing up the ladder. Mm. Like who, because now you've developed all this mush yeah inside you yeah that i feel works against a career person's like the kind of hunger that you need to have yeah agreed and so so i realized that that has been the hardest thing to kind of navigate to have a balance because i do i understand i can never really be the 19 year old who went to idols and left home and was just living his own life pursuing a dream. I just can never be that again. Yeah. I have too much responsibility yeah. to do that. So figuring out, okay, how do I still make sure that I don't shortchange my own life sure. so good. while trying to be responsible for everything, I guess, that God has blessed me with? Sure. Yeah. That what has been what has been the hardest for thing me for you? being a new parent and specifically for our relationship and Yes, we take cute reels on Instagram and nice pictures and kids are amazing. The cuddles are nice. But you're you're a newborn. Yeah. Specifically for myself, I'm a new person. I'm a new woman. Um and then that has and then we think that like the relationship can still go on as normal. And it can't. Mm-mm. Like a whole lot of adjusting has to happen. We were speaking to friends of our, I was speaking to my friend and she said, my husband and I had to sit down and say, hey, 
dude, like, we fine, but there's no connection. Like, what's happening? Like, who mm. are we? Do we like each other? So that for me was really, really hard. And because you're focusing on the child, but you're also trying to not neglect the marriage, but also as key P. So it's just such a weird transition. And you have to work extra hard to go back to a place where, okay, it's us first. Mm. It's us first. And then even for us, we had a, a Zani immediately. Like yeah. a bit, just as we were getting back. Starting to get into that routine of putting ourselves first. Putting ourselves first. Bam. You're pregnant again. And for me, that was also another fear during our, while I was pregnant. That, okay, what's going to happen to our relationship? Mm. Like we were just getting back. But um, it's, 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 it's doable. You need those seasons. You need you those do. seasons because they remind you. They remind you and, and also re- remind you more than anything to do the work. Because at the end of the day, we always said, it, we used to say this in the beginning of our marriage. I don't want to be that happy, but we used to say, Guti, marriage is work. You get up every day and you go to work. Mm. Yeah. It is. And and every season builds like a set of strength. Yeah. Or a set of like like characteristics that you wouldn't any you wouldn't get them any other way. And then when you're doing it, you realize or when you start to go back into your world, you realize, oh, okay, this is why I needed this lesson. Yeah. I'm a more patient person now. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. a more understanding person because yeah. I've had this training. So in a way, it all kind of circles Works back. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's very dangerous to try and eliminate one season. Like, don't rush out of, don't try rush out of dating, and don't mm. try rush out of new parenting. Don't try rush out of being a newlywed. Saying, "Oh, I can't wait till we five years. I can't wait till we." Otherwise, you spend life doing that. But like yeah. you said, that's why it was so hard in the beginning to choose. You actually tricked me into trying to choose what's better, dating or or being married. It was so hard because I think each. Each season is valid and each season, offer, yeah, each season offered something beautiful and something um, challenging. Yeah, and that's why they say um, you can have it all, just not, not all, all at, at, the, at same the same time. time. So that's, I guess that's the, the idea behind that is that you need to be in the moment, in every moment. Yeah. Because if you spread those moments and try to have everything at one time, you're actually not present in anything. Yeah. So Would you go back to dating if you could? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's wouldn't. just too much work, man. Yeah, it it's is. so much and work. And also, you're just not, you know, when you're dating, you're just on the edge. Like, you're not sure. And you're just never yourself. <laughs> you're, you're an actor. All of a sudden, now you're just Brad Pitt all the time. <laughs> all the time. Like, I'm pulling, I'm opening doors for you. You should still do Girl, that. Girl, I don't do that. <laughs> that ain't me. It'll be, no, actually, it would, it would be annoying. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah, it's annoying. Let's get into today's question. And it says, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Your podcast is absolutely gold. I'm a 30-year-old woman married to my high school married to my high school sweetheart for three years since then i feel like i have grown and i'm not the same person i was in my teens while i feel like he still is sorry i'm honestly annoyed most of the time by the things he does he's a great guy and an amazing father but i'm just no longer happy in the marriage but want to make it work i don't know how to approach this and fix it please help (laughs) You can go first. I don't like to advise people, old people, not old people, but grown-ups on things. But if it was me and the way I look at it, and I guess, I, I don't know if you look at it the same way, but marriage is one of those like forever things. I look yeah. at it like that. Like yeah. I don't look at it. My first option will always be to fix. Yeah. And so... And I think the best way to always fix is to always just be honest. Mm, communicate. Be, communicate, be transparent. This is how I feel. Because a lot of times if you don't communicate, you don't know that that person really doesn't know. Yeah. yeah like, utola yeah. utimina, I'm just, I think we're fine. Especially yeah. with guys. Like, yeah. that can happen. Like, it's happened with me where I just thought, ah, see sharp. Yeah, and then you were like, but babe. We're not, we're not, we're not yeah. okay. We look at us. We don't do anything. All we ever do is the same things over and over again. I was like, oh, that, that ain't That's it. That's a problem. <laughs> and then, you know, but when you bring it up, then I realize, oh, actually you're right. Mm. I've also gotten complacent, blah, 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 blah. So it could be anything. So just being, communicating and saying, yo, this is how I feel. Mm. And, and kind of being, this is a hard, it's a hard thing to say, man, but 
you have to kind of be the solution. And that's the hard thing about marriage mm-hmm. is that sometimes when you being hard done, the answer is in you being the solution. And sure. and that's a hard thing to do because yeah. it's kind of like saying, okay, I'm not the one doing the, the wrong thing or I don't at least see myself as the one who's doing the wrong thing, but I will be the one who we'll f- fixes it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think what you focus on um, grows. Mm. So if you're, and this is something I constantly have to check myself too as well Mm. that what am i looking at in you what am i focusing on and am i focusing on the great things that you do the great person that you are or am i focusing on all the things i think you could improve on Mm. because i think that will always be the case there's always going to be something i think you could do better at and the same for you and if that's what i always focus on then you start thinking oh man like saying kulile i I don't need this. Or what are my options? So I like what you said about saying the first option always has to be fix. How Mm. do we fix this? And um, I think you explained it well that as a man, sometimes you think things are fine. But as a woman, I've got goals and I feel like you're being complacent. But how will you know if I don't tell you? If we're not fighting, if we're still doing the regular things, you probably think, ah. Rishab. Yeah, but that's probably not what I want. I want to explore, but mm. I maybe need to tell more. you that I want more. And like you said, um, you've grown. So maybe your personality is someone who constantly wants to be challenged and wants to try new things. And his personality is, hey, man, if it's working, why change it? But it's important to find that balance in um, communicating and also mm. just looking at yourself. How are you contributing? Because if it's a marriage, we're both contributing to the problem. There's mm. no way that one, one person. person is contributing. Hard pill, hard pill to swallow, um, but it's the truth. And the fact that you're high school sweethearts and you've been together for so long, it clearly means there's something there. There's something you stay together for. And it could be a lot of things. We're in a pandemic. Maybe he's struggling in his job or he's stressed on providing or maybe the kids. There's kids now. Things have changed. Things have added on. When you were in high school, all you had to worry about was passing the exam. Mm. Now you have to pay your rent. You have to get food. You need to make sure that you secure your job. The kids go to school. So there's a whole lot of things that are added on in marriage. And to say that you, you're you not happy only now that you're in marriage, it means I think there's certain things that aren't being looked at, like additions. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I think the first step, like Brendan said, is communication. Talk together, find out where he's at, and find out where you're at and how we can meet each other. Because I think it is really important in marriage um, that we grow together. We may not grow in the same way or direction, but we both have to be growing like if i'm growing and you're not then there's a gap yeah that's true but also i mean how do we measure growth yeah that's that's a valid question it becomes tricky because like people could be growing maybe that's why maybe people some people retract when they're growing some people Mm -hmm. become more aggressive when they're growing it's growth it's everyone basically reacts differently to growth yeah so maybe someone is going back into a shell because they're growing, like you said, because it's different times he's realizing that, you know, I know personally, I've realized, okay, I have to be a little more than what I've been my entire life. Yeah. I can't just be a musician anymore. Yeah. I have to be more, right? Have to show up more. And yeah. what does that do? That puts me back into a shell because now I'm like, okay, I need to basically figure this out yeah. as just on my own because yeah. essentially that's my life. But if I don't communicate that with you, you don't know. Yeah. You look at me and you think, this guy's not growing. Yeah, yeah well, that's Gant- true. Ganti, he's growing. He's just cocooned yeah. in, in his growth like a butterfly or whatever. So we can't, yeah. Sometimes I find that we look, we think of, of growth as this one particular thing, but people grow differently. Yeah, there's something we do <laughs> and it's annoying in the moment, but whenever like we've like, fallen out or fought mm. and it's now awkward and we're trying to kind of get back <laughs> i'll either ask you or you ask me so what's your short-term goal yes. <laughs> so basically that's our icebreaker that's our icebreaker and that's if, how we get back into, into talking. things and if i'm being petty when you ask me what's my short-term goal i'll be like to just be happy in my marriage <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's it's such an uh, it's an important you just made question it, you just made me realize it's such a a great thing to yeah. do because sometimes things really are awkward and it's like you we don't know 
we don't want to talk to each yeah. other. But when you ask me, I can at least start try. the conversation. Yeah, I can try, start by being petty. Yeah. I'll tell you, I just want to be happy. You, and then you'll be like, okay, how do I make you happy? And, yeah. then, and then that opens literally... But it's communication, guys. Time. It's communication, and I guess it's finding that kind of icebreaker yeah. when the when the communication gets weird. When it's awkward, yeah. yeah. And there are really awkward moments in relationships there where are. we just honestly there's awkward moments in family, in, in family, friendships. In friendships. It's, it's friendships. just how it is. It's just how it is. It's it's. I think it's called growing pains as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think like Brendan said, the most important thing is we start by how do I fix this, and start by talking, find out where a person's heart is um and yeah let that be our focus and remember to focus on the good things why did you fall in love why mm. are you still together what makes you happy what are the good things that are happening and then from that you can take further steps if needed yeah yeah cool and that was it for today's podcast That's it. oh there's no oh yeah we just did the thing what <laughs> the question that yeah. was the question oh, yeah. that was the question and don't forget to check out the ultimate checkout from superbulous take a lot and even mr d happy shopping and enjoy we love you guys cheers guys Bye. till the next time this is our love story this is our journey